Look, I get it. $100 is a lot of money, but in this video, I'm going to be going over some $100 bills that sold for a whole lot more money than just $100. Share this video with a friend or someone that you care about, and let's just hop right into this video. So up first, we have a $100 bill from 1990 that sold for $1,250, and this is why. Really quick, I need to show you that the grade of this this bill got the 58. Now that's important because that means there's a fold on this bill. Now I can guarantee you that if there was no folds on this bill, it would have brought a lot more money than $1,250. So don't fold your bill. Here's a quick tip. If there's nowhere that you can keep your bill safe for the time being, put it in a book to keep it flat, but just don't forget about it because I've literally found rare paper money in books before, but I digress. Why did this bill sell for $1,250? $250. It's important to know that during the printing process of these bills, the back of the bill is printed first, the front of the bill is printed second, and then the third and final print is the overprint, which is the district seal at the left, the treasury green seal at the right, the serial numbers, and those number 10s around the bill, which is the district number. What you need to know on this bill is that the first print, when you flip it over, is missing. So the back of the bill is completely gone. Now you have to be very careful because there are people out there that try to do bad things and they will erase the front or the back of a bill to try to replicate this error and sell it for a lot of money. That's why getting your notes graded by a third party company like PMG is the way to go because they guarantee the authenticity and the grade of the bill. And if they get it wrong, they will gladly buy it back for its full value. Now, if you're buying or selling notes like this, make sure you're very skeptical if you buy something and the back or the front is missing because someone could literally just get an eraser and some chemicals and remove the back. So be careful, but let's hop into the next note here. This bill sold for $7,200 and here's why. So really quick, 1928 was the first year that they ever started producing small size paper money in the United States. Let me show you a quick diagram of what the bills looked like before and what they look like now. So anyways, this $100 bill also graded at the 58 grade. That could even mean there's a small corner fold on the bill. So it really does decrease the value. Now the main reason reason why this note sold for $7,200 is because this is actually an error note. Now, what's the error you say? This one can completely slip under the radar because it's so minor. But once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it. So essentially, the star at the end of the serial number is inverted. I'll show you what that looks like here and what a normal one should look like. If you have an inverted star error note, it can be worth a lot of money. So keep it safe and let's go to the next bill. So one of my favorite types of notes are these more modern $100 bills. Now these bills actually, when they were being produced, had a lot of issues because of that blue security strip that goes down the center. They had a really hard time getting that properly adjusted in the bill. It took them a long time, but I guarantee you that there's nobody counterfeiting these bills to the extent that we are seeing here. So why did it sell for $1,500? Well, the first thing I want to show you guys are these plate positions on both the front and the back of the bill. If you look at the plate position on the front top left area, you'll see a small little A and before that you'll see an FW. Now that FW stands for the Fort Worth facility where this bill was actually produced. If you do not see an FW there, that means your bill was produced at Washington DC facility and your bill could be rare. So depending on how many bills they produced at Fort Worth or Washington DC can dictate the supply and demand for that specific bill series. Now keep in mind, look at the plate position there. You see the A and then the 506. Now keep in mind of that size because when we go to the back of the bill, I'm going to show you the back plate number. Now back plate numbers and front plate numbers, what they essentially are is an internal purpose for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing to see which position that specific bill was located on a specific printing plate. What you need to know is that sometimes the back plate numbers and the front plate numbers should not go together. Now this doesn't really happen too much on modern bills, but what you need to look for is that the back plate number and the front plate number are different sizes. If that's the case, you could have something very rare. But I'll tell you this, this pretty much only happens on older bills. But the main reason why this bill sold for $1,500 is because the serial numbers are a super repeater serial number. It goes 8080, etc. If you have a rare serial number bill like this, you're in for a nice treat because $1,500 for this one. I'll spend about 10 seconds here, but the same bill, but this one's graded and it has a solid number eight serial number. Eight 
are an incredibly sought after number. It's considered a lucky number in certain countries. And this bill, guys, sold for $5,640. Now, I'm a pretty big fan of specimen notes like this. There aren't going to be that many people in the world able to see a bill like this, but essentially, this type of bill was given to banks around the world in order to deter people from submitting counterfeit currency to the banks in different countries. A surefire way to tell if you have a genuine specimen bill is by looking at the serial number. Most of the time, specimen notes will have a fancy serial number. You can see that this bill has a ascending ladder serial number. If your bill is a specimen note with specimen stamps like this, but the serial number is not fancy, there is a good chance that you have an altered bill that's worth only its face value of $100. Really quickly also, the back bottom right corner of the bill says 1076. All that is is a specimen number and that does not really matter for the value of the bill. But again, $4,117.50 for the specimen bill that graded by PMG at a 58. $28,200 for this 1928 $100 bill from the Philadelphia district. You can see see that number three on the left hand side in the district seal typically you're going to have a letter there but if you have a number instead like that large number three then you do have what's called a numeral type bill now numeral type bills are generally always more valuable than not and what's also interesting about this bill is that you're going to see the first digit in the serial number is a c now if you haven't put two and two together already c is the third letter in the alphabet that's why that that will always correlate with the district number. So just really quickly, you can have districts one through 12 or A through L. If that large number three in the district seal on the left-hand side of the bill was a one, then the serial number would start with an A. If it was a two, it would be a B. If it was a three, a C, a four, it'd be a D, etc. Also, keep in mind the district numbers in four locations around the bill. Now I bring all this up because if those do not match, for example, if this serial number started with an A or a B, instead of a C, then it would be worth even more money. That's incredibly rare and valuable. What you need to know on this bill is that not only does it have all the characteristics of a valuable note, but also it has a rare serial number with only three different types of digits, zeros, ones, and fours, and also it got a very high grade at a 65 EPQ. All these things combined allowed it to sell for $28,200. Now this is a genuine United States $100 bill gold certificate. Now believe it or not, this bill sold for $2 $115,000. And essentially, this bill was produced around the time of the Confederate War. And these higher denomination bills back then were pretty unheard of. If you were carrying around a $100 bill in 1863, you were either extremely wealthy or you worked at a bank or something of this extent. But what makes this bill so cool is that only three examples of this specific note are known to exist, and two of them reside in the Smithsonian Institution. This is a gold certificate which means back in the day you could take this bill to a bank and get equal value of gold in return. This is a genuine $100 gold certificate bill and if somehow you come across a genuine example, you're in for some life changing money because $2,115,000 for this $100 bill. If you're trying to learn how to sell your paper money or coins for the most money, my coin and currency mastermind class is now live. Click the link below for more information and I'll see you inside.